Hey, what is up, traders? What's up, tycoons? Super excited for today's video on J and J. This is going to be Johnson and Johnson. Uh, this actually is a viewer request. I do these viewer requests every week. So if you want to see your stock or your crypto bond commodity, whatever it is, I do them all. I'll make a video on it for you guys as soon as I can. All you got to do is comment down below. And I'll be happy to get to it as soon as I can. As I mentioned, we're going to break down the major retracement levels right here that we need to pay attention to, as well as highlight this very strong demand zone and also use the relative strength index to go over some of the previous divergences and also show you guys how those divergences play out and how they're potentially really good entry and exit signals. So make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and we'll go ahead and jump straight into it. So the first thing I want to highlight is our demand zone over here. We've bounced, okay, about five, six, seven times, okay, here previously in the past, uh, really in this range uh, about 156 to about 159. Okay, we got a multiple bounces over here. We pushed up higher. All right, demand step back in, push back up higher, demand stepped in here, pushed higher, demand stepped back in higher. Even as recently of uh, like October of this year uh, or of 2022, we did test that level again and bounce. And look at where we're approaching right now. We're just above that level, potentially heading back down into this demand zone. Now, you notice that there's a series of circles all over the chart. I'm going to go over those really quick so you understand why they're there. Uh, so that way it's not so confusing. But what we're tracking here is a low and a lower low, right? So obviously the price of this stock has been in a downtrend. But if you compare this to the relative strength index, what you can see is that each of these coincide with divergences. So remember, low, lower low here, but we have a low and we actually have a higher low right here. So what this means is that we're actually building relative strength in this stock currently, even though the price is dropping. In this case, this would be a bullish divergence as we're building the relative strength while the price is going lower. It's an indicator you may see some bullish activity. Now, we are also re-entering this previous demand zone. Uh, so there is a lot of things lining up saying that we could potentially get some bounce. Uh, tomorrow is the ex-dividend date. Okay, what that means is that if you want to, you know, be able to receive the dividends for Johnson & Johnson that they pay out, you have to buy in by February 17th. Okay, so that could attract investors. It's not some big mega catalyst that's going to cause it to suddenly skyrocket or anything, but there is the potential that investors would try to buy into it so that way they can receive that dividend pay it, payout on its next dividend payout. Um, so, you know, that's our bullish divergence we have forming as it enters an area of demand. If we take a look here in the past, look what happens as we build the bullish divergence uh, and then entered into our demand zone. We had a low here, lower low here, and a lower low here. While meanwhile, on the relative strength index, we had a low, higher low, and a higher low. So we were building that relative strength while we were continuing to head lower. And we came into that demand zone with a bullish divergence, and we got a very, very strong move to the upside. So there is the potential that that could happen again. OK, now, just because this bullish divergence has started forming doesn't mean we're going to get some type of crazy reversal. Right. If you take a look here off the initial bullish divergence, yes, we do get a little bounce, but ultimately we end up coming down and creating a lower low. So keep that in mind, even if we do get some type of bounce here. OK, there is the potential that we could come back down and make a lower low, but we want to see us continue to hold this bullish divergence trend line as long as we're holding this bullish divergence trend line then we have the possibility of some bullish activity in the future, and we could potentially see another big move to the upside. Now, notice how usually it takes about three lower lows uh, before we really start to see uh, some type of a reversal. Now, over here, what we have is the exact opposite in its bearish divergence. The reason this is relevant to us right now is because we still have that bearish divergence trend line. Same thing, right? So we're making a high here, higher highs, right? Making higher highs. Clearly the stock is in an uptrend, but it was losing relative strength, making a high, lower high and a lower high. So we have not broken out of this bearish divergence trend line yet. 
So let's say we do get some type of a rally, okay, and, and this bullish divergence immediately plays out and we get some strong rally. We need to be cautious of this bearish divergence trend line that initially was behind a lot of this big drop. Now, technicals aren't the only reason that stocks move, of course. Uh, they recently had earnings in... A big reason that you're seeing a price decline in Johnson & Johnson is because they're losing a lot of their pricing power, okay? Uh, the consumer has been pretty strong, uh, and, you know, really, <clears throat> inflation has been strong as well, but they're reaching a cracking point, okay? Johnson & Johnson can only raise prices so much before they lose demand, and they pretty much believe that they're nearing that threshold right now, where, hey, if they start to, you know, increase prices for their products even more, and continue to raise them, you know, multiple times, then they fear that they could be lose losing demand as a result. So they're really stuck in between, um, you know, a rock and a hard place right now. Okay, so with that being mine, uh, we do have to consider some of the bearish possibilities. What I want to show you guys is the potential for a inverse cup and handle right here. So notice how we have a clear inverse cup. OK, let's say we do get some type of a bounce here off of the bullish divergence, but not a strong bounce. And we do something like this. All right. We need to be very cautious because the more times that you test a demand zone, right, uh, the weaker it gets. It's just like support and resistance, but rather than one specific level. All right. This is a, uh, a zone here where buyers have created an imbalance, meaning that there's been an imbalance of buy orders. There's been uh, more buy orders then sell orders at these prices that's continued to push it up. Are those buy orders still going to be there? And is there still going to be a large enough presence of buyers or have over time over the past year or two, have buyers really evaporated, um, you know, potentially. And, you know, there is the chance that those buyers won't be there. So you do need to be cautious uh, of like an inverse cup and handle pattern and a break below our demand zone here. If that happens, um, you know, this thing definitely could come back down all the way to 150, potentially even lower. Now, that's just being upfront and transparent with you guys. Uh, we do have some bullish indicators going, all right? And, uh, you know, with that bullish divergence, what we want to see here on our MACD is we want to see this curl back up. So this red line is the line you want to pay attention to. Currently, it's below the blue line. Typically, when it curls above, that's what's known as an entry signal. So it'll be really interesting to see if we can get bullish divergence and a MACD entry signal. Those would be two possible indicators of bullish activity, plus our demand zone here. So that's setting up about three things saying we could get some type of a bounce. That brings us to our next point, which is going to be the three major retracement levels, the 61.8, the 50%, and the 38.2. These are the three most common and most well-respected retracement levels. And the reason you use these is because nothing moves in a straight line down or a straight line up. You get a move down retracement continuation lower or a move up retracement continuation higher. So clearly, we've had a very strong move to the downside. And if we do start to get some bullishness, and let's say we get that MACD entry signal and we really see the start start the stock start to rally, we need to be cautious and mindful that 161, 6, uh, 167.61, 170.18, and 172. 0.75. Those are three, you know, healthy retracements to ultimately continue the downtrend, right? So even if we do get a large bounce from about 160 all the way up to 172, 75, unless we break through those levels, we have the possibility of continuing the downtrend. Now that doesn't mean we have to continue the downtrend. If we come up, you know, start to retrace and consolidate a little, right, and do something like this, and then break out past those retracement levels, that's when we can spot a potential reversal where we would put in a high and potentially a higher high. So keep that in mind. If we respect these levels and reject them, most likely we're going to continue the downtrend. But if we break through them, that's when we have the possibility of getting a reversal. Okay, so um, that's going to wrap up today's video. Hopefully you learned something new. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. I do these viewer requests every week. So all you have to do to see uh, your ticker symbol in the next video is comment down below and I'll get to it as soon as I can.